Okay, y'all. I know it's been a minute. Uh, probably like two weeks. Sorry, y'all. I told y'all hard times right now, nigga. So, um, well, really, that wasn't why. I had a funeral one week, and then last week I went home back to California for a reunion. So I'm back. What up? You need to come here. You want to come here, nigga? I'm talking to you. Oh, <laughs> we can still see you looking like a creep in the video, just to let you know. <laughs> but anyways, so I'm back. Uh, this week is Real Housewives of Potomac. This is my first review. I am so pissed. My aunt um, passed away the week that it aired, so I'm not pissed about that. Like, ugh. But, you know, I'm pissed because of, like, all that happened at the same time, so I couldn't review because the first episode, honey. Yes, that was, like, ugh, I was just hooked in love. You know, first episode, you know I love messy shit. So, I was like, hell yeah, we got some new catty bitches. Okay. Hmm. But anyway, so this is this is actually episode three. Yeah, yeah, episode three. So um, I hate that I really didn't do the other two episodes because, ugh. But I'm, I'm sure I'm gonna talk about it anyways. So the episode starts off with um, first of all, let me tell you just just tell you how I felt the first episode. The first episode, the first like within like by the time they introduced all the women, I was just like real half breeds of Potomac. Because I was just like, Bravo had to go find a bunch of light skins, a bunch of half breeds for this one. I said, I guess they are done. Atlanta was like, no more full black women because I was just, I just thought that was funny. But I mean, then again, you know, finding out more as we get through, you know, the shows, we find out more about the area of Potomac. So we get, I, I see why there's only light skinned women besides Giselle, but. She's trying to be white, you know. She's trying to find the blondest hair and the lightest makeup she could find, honey. But anyways, <laughs> so if you want to know what color I have on my lips, it's my mama's lipstick, but she be all right. Um, it's NYX, NYX, whatever you guys call it, in the high voltage lipstick in color number eight. They don't have names like the other ones, so this one is number eight. So really, I don't know if you can really tell because the sun. I'm having the sun face me. <laughs> <laughs> get all this, you know, but, um, ooh, sorry for my chipped ass nail polish, I need to step it up, but anyways, yeah, it's number eight, but anyway, so I just thought that, you know, like, my first impression of Karen was, oh my god, a bougie ass old lady, like, uh, but she knows how to read and give shade, so I'm here for it all day damn long, Giselle, I was like, oh, she's beautiful, knock off Vanessa Williams, Vanessa Williams' baby sister, something, you know, somewhere along those lines, um, and then, don't be in here messing your uncle's stuff up, because I can't pay for it. But anyway, so, um, Giselle, yes, I liked her. I, I still do like her, but honestly, I just see hater, 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 hater. Like, that's all I hear come out of her mouth is hate. You know, not all the time, but I just get the hater vibe from her. Y'all let me know how y'all feel about that. I just think that she's a hater. Especially when Ashley comes into play. I got hater all day. I just don't know what it was about Ashley, but immediately you would just tell. She was just like, who is this pretty bitch? So, hi, Papa. He's back. Yes, his head looking a damn mess. I redid it and the nigga did, it lasted all of one day. My auntie did it and it lasted two weeks. So, obviously, I don't have to do no damn hair. But my baby's still cute, though. Hey. <laughs> but anyways. So, say hi. Hi. <laughs> you look sleepy. <clears throat> Sorry, y'all had a little bit of a cold. My cough is horrible. It's on 10. Try not to get my baby sick. But, um, anyway, so this week, it, I think the episode, I didn't even start even paying attention, really, because it started off with boring ass Katie and Andrew. Anyways, they were just... I don't even know what the fuck they were talking about, honestly. <clears throat> Ooh, I'm so sorry. That's disgusting. <clears throat> oh, I'm so sorry. But, um, <clears throat> Katie and Andrew, I was just like, uh, boring. They ain't talking about nothing. I think they were talking about getting ready for the event. I'm sure she threw an engagement somewhere because the bitch can't just not say anything about the engagement or whatever, the ring that she wants. So, um, yeah. Then I think after that, it was Karen. Yeah, it was Karen at her house getting her daughter ready for prom. So, um, no. 
I don't forgot who was after Katie. I think it was Karen again, but I didn't really care. Like, whatever. So, it um, gets to Giselle and Karen. And I think it was the day. I think after Andrew and Katie was Giselle and Karen sitting down um, getting um, in the morning just trying to talk about what the last little meeting they had, which was stupid because Karen was dumb for getting mad about the whole seat thing. Like, bitch, if it was a problem, say it then and there. I felt Giselle on that one, but at the same time, Giselle, come on now. You know it's the birthday girl. Just... The right thing to uh, to have done would have been for her to slide her ass over. But like I said, hate her. So, you know, I, I, you could just tell Giselle it always has to be about her. She's going to be, um, I don't know if you want to say the Nini or the Kenya of this season. Whichever person you feel like, you know, basically the, the instigator. One of the instigators. Her and Karen, them two bitches. Yeah, you can just tell they're going to be the Nini and the Kenya of this, this show. So, I mean, but I like Nene and Kenya. They just both sometimes get on my fucking nerves. Kenya gets on my nerves way more than Nene. I think Nene's a bitch all the time. So, you know, and then um, at least Nene knows she's a bitch. Kenya tries to act like she's not one. So that's where my the problem lies for me, you know, as far as them go. So, you know, Karen and Giselle, they're still cool and all. They're talking about Karen's just basically trying to get Giselle to apologize or try to hash it out with Sharice again. Giselle's basically like, mm or nah, but, um, then it, um, she's just basically like, I'm done, she was like, if Sharice wants to reach out to me, I'm cool with it, it's whatever, but if not, then our relationship's basically done for now, so then the next scene is Katie and Ashley out on the dates with their old niggas, <laughs> basically, um, and they talking about that interracial love and blah, 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 which I ain't mad about, like, hey, it is what it is, right, nigga? If his daddy wouldn't have found me, I would have been still looking for my white boy and I'm playing. <laughs> but, uh, no, but, um, you know, they're just talking about interracial love and everything. And then it was weird to me how they said that you don't really see interrela interracial relationships. But I was like, how could you not? Because all I see is, um, you know, these women, you know, these older women, and if they're not with an athlete, or like Karen with a really successful black man in IT, which most of the time it's either going to be a man, a black man in IT, or in sports, or in music, which is going to be the, most of the time only the time you're going to see a black man with money, honestly, um, unless he just work his way up, you know, from the bottom. But for the most part, those are the three things you're going to see a rich black man in. So I wasn't surprised when Karen's husband was a really successful, a uh, really successful man. In information technology because that's just what it is you know if a black man ain't good with computers he's good with his hands as far as sports go or you know some kind of athletics or it's music not saying that we don't make money in other ways you know but for the most part those are the top three so when she said that she don't really really see interracial I was like bitch half y'all are half breed so uh, y'all seen some kind of interracial relationships like girl you're the, and then the one who said it was Katie like your parents and then Ashley, your parents, like, you know, I just thought that was weird. And I was just like, I, maybe they're just talking about as far right now, like their age range, because most of them did are, I mean, the other ones are with black men. So I guess maybe I get that, but I don't know. I just thought that was weird because you guys were raised in a racial relationships. But anyways, yeah. So then the next one was at Robin's house. Next scene, Robin and their dysfunctional family. I'm not going to call it dysfunction because it seems like whatever they got going on really works. But I'm calling it dysfunction because she made it clear this episode that, that he left and came and she let him move back in. She hasn't specified what broke them up. He was an NBA player. So cheating, probably going to be first thing. And then so um, she's like basically, I'm sorry y'all. Um, she's just talking about, you know, what what her and Juan are dealing with right now. Basically, she's saying that they basically, she ain't saying they broke, but when you go from, oh, I just got like extra loud. Um, she ain't saying they're broke, but when you go from making multi million dollars to being a coach, you're broke. It might not be my broke because they're probably, uh, they're clearly still living better than me in my little apartment, but when you go from millions to thousands that's broke in their language you know and we're gonna find out next week because Ashley is about to tell it <laughs> and so um yeah so it's just like you know they have a beautiful family I just don't like the dysfunction I'm calling it dysfunction because of the kids the kids moved out your ear okay you know the kids are there they seen the daddy leave and then the daddy's back 
y'all not together, but y'all not in, but y'all not apart. It's just like weird. Like what do even though I know they're not telling the kids this shit, but what like there's gonna come a time when the kids get older and they're gonna expect a little bit more. You know, and if they're not together, they're not working out, I just think this is bad. I, I just don't think that it's smart for them to be doing this just to keep the family together. So, I don't know. If it works out, hey. And then he's trying to figure out his new career because he doesn't play basketball anymore. And then he only played seven years. So, I'm like, he was obviously wasn't that good, you know, or he was just at a position that everybody fucking plays. Because I'm like, only seven years in basketball? Like... When did he start, you know? Because usually they at least get 10. Some people get 30 years in the game. Like, Kevin Garnett is still playing. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, I just was like, nigga, I don't know. Maybe he, he must must got injured. It had to be an injury. Because I just, seven years playing basketball is just really short. Even though you do age quicker because all that running and stuff. I, you know, it's, I have more questions. And then I want to know, do y'all live in Potomac or y'all just on the outskirts? Yeah, her and Giselle. That that's my thing. I'm like, are y'all the little catty bitches? Cause y'all are technically not in Potomac. I think they're on the outside. They might be on the edge of Potomac in Baltimore. You know, on the little. You know, because I'm just like, y'all ain't got no money. Y'all ain't with no. Well, I ain't gonna say Giselle, but if y'all ain't got no money, why are y'all on the show? And y'all are in Potomac. You know, it just doesn't really make sense. I don't know. Maybe they haven't got kicked out of Potomac yet. Hey. <clears throat> Excuse me. So the next scene is Karen and her daughter. Her daughter's going to prom. She's getting ready. Um, gets to sit in mommy's chair and at the vanity. I guess that was the goal for her growing up. Like, why not ask your why not ask your daddy for your own vanity? But okay, you know. But then again, you know, mommy uh, clearly runs that shit. So I'm just like, I don't really know how to feel about her because when she brought up the date, you know, him being white. Oh, this is what we aspire her to be and I was just like so you want her to be with a white man or like I just think that she worded that very wrong I don't think she meant she wanted him to be with a white man but she just worded that very wrong and then I already get I already got the, the first episode I got the vibe of oh we're light skin and we're better kind of vibe from Karen and so I that's why I said about just um Sharice that you can tell that she tries to wear the lightest of the hair, the lightest of the makeup to try to fit in with these women because I feel like at some point, I'm pretty sure they probably looked at her like, mm. and Giselle's not dark. Giselle's probably the same color as me, but compared to light, bright, almost white, you know, we're going to look a little darker. Like, look at me compared to my baby. Like, you know, there's a drastic difference. You know, this is like, I'm Sharice, and this is my Karen or Giselle, you know? So, I get it. She tries to, like, kind of fit in and not look like the darkie of the group. But that's another thing, this light skin versus dark skin thing. Like, we just have to quit it. We just have to quit it because we're raising our kids, you know, like, you know, we're raising our kids to, that, to say that that's okay, and it's not. Like, I was raised in that. Being from California, it's always a light skin versus dark skin thing. I mean, people always think it's the South, but no. <laughs> Especially being in California, being around... A lot of white people, you know, as far as that, it's very mixed, but, you know, just being, you know, especially being in the suburbs and, you know, it's very few black people around, you know, you're trying to fit in. Honestly, I ain't never really tried to fit in with the white people. I never, that was just never my thing. I never wanted to be a white girl, ever. <laughs> now, this hair might fool you, but, <laughs> but, um, yeah, I never wanted to be a white girl. I was always the black girl. Like, I always... You know, not saying I wanted to be black, but I, I was always black. I never wanted to be something I wasn't. I see a lot, like even a lot of my friends, they, I'm not saying that they didn't want to be black, but they wanted to fit in and they were more on the white side. I never, no, I didn't want to listen to rock and and in country and shit. I listened to hip hop. I watched all the black shows. I never, you know, like I, that was just me. I don't know. So I'm just like seeing grown ass women like this is just crazy because it's just like I really see like light skin versus dark skin shade in this show and then I was watching Ashley Miller and she was talking about the blue bloods and but oh no, was it Ashley or was it Justin J1232 y'all are the only people I watch one of them said something about the blue bloods and all this other stuff and I never you know the blue bloods club and all this other stuff you know basically being, you know, back in the day with slavery and all that, you know, like basically house niggas and field niggas. 
light skin versus dark skin and that just gives me that vibe they think they're better because they are lighter skin they're closer to being white but at the end of the day you're still a nigga in white people's eyes like i just don't i've never understood that like <laughs> people want to be white so bad but if they see the piece of a kink in your hair or the slightest color in your skin you know if they see a little bit of nose you know nose or lip they know so it's just like why are you fighting to be something that you're not you know so i don't know it's just weird and so um and then her name the little girl named karen and ray's daughter is raven now don't get me wrong raven is there's plenty of people named raven but how convenient that your name is ray his name is ray and your name is karen you named your daughter raven kind of ghetto even though if their names if their names didn't blend to make the word i wouldn't say that because every, there's plenty of women i know named raven but how convenient that this girl's name is raven and her daddy name is ray and her mom name is karen so y'all use that name because it's your two names together and that's ghetto to me like that's ghetto like people who these girls these women want to be so bougie especially karen but girl you still get her that ghetto that farmer hopped out your ass when you named you <clears throat> when you named your daughter because i was just like raven okay karen okay <clears throat> so then the next scene um karen's in the wedding dress shop with her mom and i was just like robin girl you're black now i'm not saying that it's a problem but girl it's okay for you to be white it's okay <laughs> like you're not gonna be judged especially among amongst this group of women like i was just like okay now don't get me wrong i know a girl from college that i met and honestly yeah i know a girl from college that i met that has the thinnest hair in the world very very thin like white people hair very like this very thin has a very has a curl pattern but not much very wavy just look like she has indian in her <coughs> but she's fully black so i'm not saying that it's not possible but she's also my color with that hair so <coughs> that's what makes the difference <coughs> you know it's just like girl you're white it's okay and then your mom pulls up and she looked like you with dark hair and she didn't look a piece of black maybe creole cajun but that's just that's not black to me that's what it is like yeah creole is black french but then she didn't look that she looked more cajun than anything and cajun i don't even really know cajuns yeah are probably black and white with a little bit of creole rap. i don't really know the definitions of breaking it down like that but they didn't even look that honestly like i you know i went to school i went to gremlin so i see a, i've seen the creoles and cajuns and stuff and they still look black you know and so they don't look black to me like they look white or maybe some kind of hispanic and i know it doesn't matter but i'm just saying like if you're gonna say i am a black woman and she tried to call katie i'm mean, she tried to call ashley out for humping her and saying oh white women do that girl you look the whitest out of everybody on this show like you look like your parents are white so i don't know i just want to see your daddy let me see your daddy and then i'll make the judgment i'm sorry it doesn't matter but it matters right <laughs> i don't know and so i'm just like then she's giving the dress back she said she paid 6700 for it and then you're selling it back 10 years later so i want to know how much she got for that dress couldn't have been much <clears throat> she ain't say it was Vera Wang. She ain't say it was Christian Dior. She ain't say it was Louis Vuitton. Like, you know, I don't know if they make dresses, but you know what I'm saying. I know Vera Wang does, but she didn't say a name, even though it doesn't matter what brand it was. I just don't see her getting a lot of money for some old regular dress after 10 years, you know? <clears throat> so, I don't know. And then, so after the next scene is Karen, Sharice, and Ashley and Katie. They're all meeting up at the clothing store. Karen's looking for some stuff for her daughter, I guess, for the summer. Since it's prom season, I'm, yeah, school's about to be out. So, and I'm like, she's obviously about to graduate, but then again, I don't know. Maybe not. So they're, you know, they're meeting, basically meeting Ashley, trying to see, see um, Ashley out. And it seems her and Karen were getting along shockingly great you know i don't know how long that's gonna last because i can tell that ashley's gonna eventually do something that isn't of etiquette and gonna piss karen the fuck off so hey you know i'm just waiting on that day and then um just the next scene is they they were just um katie and um ashley were just um that's say karen 
Karen and Ashley were getting along. I don't know if I just said that, but Katie and Ashley were just trying on the bathing suits so they can, um, so Karen can get an idea what she can get for Raven or whatever. And the next scene is Giselle with her daughters trying to pick out her outfit for Ashley's um, event. And then the little girl was like, oh, my foot, can, can, she was like, she said something about my foot ain't big. And my little brother would have walked in the room and saw that. And we was like, your foot ain't big. That little girl foot and almost took up that whole shoe. Now, I can't talk. I wear a 12 or a 13, depending on the shoe. And so, like, when I was in fifth grade, I was wearing, like, a size 8 shoe. So, I mean, like, but I've always, no, back then I was still kind of small. I hadn't really, I hadn't really hit my fat stage yet. So, I was still kind of small, but I was still taller than normal kids and everything so I've always been a bigger girl but I didn't really start getting fat till middle school like ooh. but um yeah so I never had small feet but those girls are like 9 and 10 and so I guess yeah I would be 9 or 10 in 8th I mean in 5th grade or whatever so yeah I guess that makes sense but they're so tiny you know so I just like was like damn little girl got some big feet they, damn they took up their mama whole shoe and so um she was just like you know, trying to get their advice or whatever. And then she threw shade, talking about, well, they're closer to Ashley's age. And I'm just like, what is it about Ashley that she didn't like? I don't, Ashley did not do anything to that woman besides be pretty. And Robin even said it. Robin was like, I love when Giselle meets new pretty women because she'd be giving them shade. And she did that. So I was just like, mm, hate her. <laughs> and then so, um, <coughs> Jesus, Lord have mercy. I don't know if I want to do another video today coughing all this shit up. Ugh. But, um, then it goes to Katie and Andrew. They're getting ready for, um, they're getting ready for the event, I believe. Yeah, they're getting ready for the event. But yeah, they're getting ready for the event. And, of course, she, um... She just brings up the engagement again and again. And I'm just like, girl, be quiet. Like, I wouldn't want to marry you. Like, every time we talk about it, like, if me personally, the first time I ask a nigga, I'm not, I'm not, first of all, I would never ask a nigga, like, when are you going to marry me? Let's start there. Because I'm just not that desperate to be married. But, um, you know, most women, that's just what their goal is. I don't really give a damn. Like, I actually enjoyed my whole year. So I was like, oh, in a relationship. Like, I'm saying, no. But, um, yeah, so I'm just like, it's just not that deep. I don't know. There's no uh, none of the women I know are super pressured to get <clears throat> to get married. Like, <clears throat> yeah, we're engaged, and <clears throat> it's crazy because he proposed to me two weeks before we found out I was pregnant. So it was fucking crazy, and I'm like, that was God's way, of, <laughs> you know, just like I don't know, getting together. Even though we're still not married, I'm like not in a rush to be married. Like we're in a relationship. We got a baby. We married. What is the piece of paper gonna do? You know, like. It's not really going to change anything. I'm not in a rush. So I just like, it just kind of bothers me that Casey, Katie is so fucking thirsty. I'm like, girl, you got three kids that ain't this man's. He's taking care of you and them, and you just need a ring. Like, girl, y'all are married. Like, shut up. But at the same time, like she said, Potomac, that's what it's about. It's all about having the ring, looking the, looking the part. But whatever, over it. So, um,. And he basically brushed her ass off. She was like, "Oh, what should I? T what should um, I? What should I refer to you as?" And he was like, "Boy toy." Like, yeah. Even though he was playing, boy toy and fiance are totally off. And I'm like, he just brushed her ass off. Like, girl, shut the fuck up. Be quiet. I'll propose when I'm ready, basically. And so, ooh, my baby's out. <clears throat> Boy, you fall asleep in every video. Hold on, let me move my hair out the way. Yeah, I got my baby. He got a cold. His nose is crusty. But, um, yeah. And so, then they get to Ashley's, um, tasting. And then I'm like, okay, so I, she made it sound like it was a party. Girl, just say, let's get together and taste some whiskey. She sounded, it made it seem like she was having a whole event where, like, more than just them were going to be there. I was like, okay. But, um, she... Uh, that Karen gets there early because Karen was like, let me get my middle seat, honey. <laughs> she said, Giselle ain't gonna get my seat today. And then she was just being real bougie like, oh my god. Uh, uh, 
Like, this is where we're drinking? Like, okay, bitch. You knew when your ass was standing outside, you should either walk, didn't come in, or shut the fuck up about it. Like, why complain you're here? I just don't like that about people. I just, that's so annoying to me. When people invite you somewhere, like, go home and talk about that shit later. Text Sharice later and be like, girl, that... Where the fuck did she have us at? But don't be disrespectful. All this damn etiquette, but you ain't learned the, you know, complaining about something like that. I, I think that should be in the etiquette book. Like, I don't know. I just thought that was tasteless. I don't know. That was tasteless to me. Like, girl, be quiet. And then um, Giselle walks in talking shit already low key. Like, ooh, just like Karen. That's why them bitches get along because they bougie as hell. Or at least they try to be bougie. I'm, I'm, I don't, I'm not for women who want to be bougie and, and have etiquette when they want to. Either you have it all the time or you just don't. And that would be my thing with Giselle. Giselle. Giselle wants to have etiquette sometimes and she wants to be from Potomac sometimes. But she want to be ghetto and quote rap songs all the time too. Like you can't be both. I'm sorry. You can't. It just this doesn't look right. Be yourself or have etiquette. Which one do you want to do? Like I don't know. Maybe that's just me. I just don't have a problem showing a rap, my ratchet side. I don't know how to bougie it up when I'm at work, but y'all, well, I guess they are at work. Because I ain't seen them bitches go to no job. But anyways, so then I'm like, Robin is just sitting there. Robin really ain't saying shit. And I'm like, Robin, get your friend. Because she's being very shady. Like, if my friend was be acting like that, I'm going to check my friends. And my friends are going to check me. Like, me and my bitches have a relationship where if we're wrong, we're wrong. And we tell each other, like, period. Now, I ain't gonna say we don't tell, we tell each other everything. Because I know we still have our boundaries and our limits to where we know we would probably hurt each other's feelings. But when it's time to be said, we say something. And I just feel like Robin just sitting there like, hey, I'm here. I'm still on the show. Just don't, don't put the camera on me and my husband, though. But anyways, <laughs> let me stop being shady. Because Robin ain't really did nothing to piss me off. You know, I like her. But it's just like, get your friend. That's all. Get your friend. So then Giselle and Cherie start going at their issues. How that got brought up, Giselle just started fucking talking. But okay. Let Ashley have her event. But you know, she doesn't like Ashley. So I see why she took over it. Trying to talk to um, Giselle. They trying to hash out their bullshit. But it was clearly getting nowhere. So Robin shut that shit the fuck down like I wanted her to. Finally, she spoke up because I was just like, girl, are you ever going to get your friend? Karen wasn't going to say nothing because Karen already had her issues and she already hashed it out. So she didn't need to say anything. I'm glad she didn't. So then the next scene is at Katie and her event with Andrew. And I thought it was, I don't know, maybe I just pictured it being different. Like she was just walking around networking and trying to recruit people for her own damn event. Like that's kind of. I mean, I, I'm not a philanthropist, so I don't know how that shit works, but that was just weird to me. I'm like, she wasn't there actually doing anything for that specific event that they were at, but trying to recruit people for her own event for, for the future. I just thought that was weird, but okay. But that's probably what they do. I don't know. Maybe I need to get some rich friends and find the fuck out, huh? <laughs> but uh, yeah, so um, then somebody walks up and they ask, are they engaged? And I was just like, oh my God. If I hear the fucking word engagement one more time, I'm going to go crazy because I'm just over it. Over it. And so, then this bitch had the nerve to look at Andrew and say, are we engaged? I thought that was so uncool. That was just so fucking uncool. Like, why would you put your nigga on blast like that? Like, that was awkward. And the people who were standing there were awkward. And the girl apologized for asking because that was, that was very uncomfortable for me to watch. Let alone for them to have to be there and watch this couple kind of look at each other and figure out are they engaged. And I know it wasn't that deep, but I just feel like she shouldn't have done that. That was just so uncalled for. Ugh, that just wasn't cute. And then I knew, I knew I, I, when I, uh, when the lady apologized for bringing it up, I knew I wasn't tripping about how me feeling uncomfortable because that lady was clearly uncomfortable because this lady had to ask her man are they engaged like girl why would you do that that just was not cute and I would have been like you know I was Andrew I'd have been like nope shut her ass down like bitch you want to play let's fucking play then <laughs> like you know but he knows he had to go home to her so I'm glad he did it he's not petty like that he's not a black man so because <laughs> if it was a if Andrew was a black man that would have been a whole other situation <laughs> and trust and believe <laughs> And so, yeah, just like, like, like if you thought that that was just uncalled for, just let me know how y'all felt. I don't know. That was just me. But anyway, so they're back. They go flashback to Ashley's party and um, Giselle. They're basically showing Giselle and um, Sharice arguing again, but they shut that down. So Ashley brings up 
to Giselle, like, why you, basically, why'd you call me a thought? And she was like, oh, because you were humping on someone you didn't know for two seconds. So that's a thought. And she was like, well, I thought that being a, a, being a thought was, you know, having sex. We didn't have sex, did we? Like, <laughs> but I'm like, real shit. Like, girl, actually stand up for yourself because that was un- unfucking called for. Like, no. <clears throat> and so, uh, she was just like, oh, boy. My brother's bed right there. <laughs> <coughs> But anyways, so, um, she was just like, she was just like, um, I forgot where I was. Yeah, so they, anyways, Ashley and Zell ended up settling it. They pop. Oh. He just fell off the bed. You okay? You okay? that past you real quick. He be all right, y'all. You okay? No, I know you ain't fell off the bed plenty of times. It's okay. It's okay. I know it hurts. I know. I know. I know. It's okay, Papa. Okay. I'm sorry, y'all. Anyways, <laughs> so you want to see? <laughs> you want to see? Hi, I'm okay, you guys. I okay. You still got the tears, but it's okay. So, um, you want this piece of paper? Here, play. Yeah, that's my notes. <laughs> yeah, so, um. Yeah, they apologize. They get over it. Um, Sharice and Giselle, um, Giselle hug it the fuck out. They'll be mad at each other next week, too. Um, and it's probably because they're drunk. Everybody hashed their bullshit out because they're drunk. Which is, which is fucking good, though. Compared to all the other shows where the bitches get drunk. <coughs> and they start going off. So, Potomac, this is progress for Bravo. Bitches get drunk and they get friendly instead of getting angry. So, Kudos to Potomac. Um, and then so then she's like, then Giselle just can't help but to be shady. Oh, I should have just humped you. Really? Like, what why say that? And then Ashley was like, Yeah, you should, because it makes it, you know, it's fun. Like, you know, basically like it could make everybody calm the fuck down. How about that, bitch? Yeah, you know. And so I was just like, hater. <laughs> Giselle's a hater, and then it goes to Katie and Andrew, they're in the bed, I mean, well, not, not in the bed, they're trying to get ready for bed, Katie's trying to braid her hair up, and then she messed it up, so she's trying to teach Andrew how to braid, like, how black of you, Katie, how black of you, girl, that was so black, <laughs> psych, bitch, anyways, so then she brings up wanting more kids, and I'm like, okay, first of all, Katie, your, your situation is already very confusing, I can't remember she said that her... Y'all let me know. Did she say that her husband left her while she was pregnant with the twins? I thought that's what she said, but I can't, I might be confusing with another show. But, um, girl, you got three toddlers, and you're talking about having more kids. Your man won't even post to you, and you're ready to have more kids. Like, girl, he's already taking care of your three. I don't really think that he's ready to bring his own kids into that when he's already getting used to having three fucking toddlers around. So, I don't really know. I was just like, Katie, girl, back off. And then he basically was just like, she was like, he wants, he said he wants to be engaged or married before he starts having more kids. And then he basically told her, like, if you would stop pressuring me and stop bringing that shit up, your ass would have been married probably six months to a year ago. 
but because you keep poking and asking and bringing it up it's just annoying like if a woman i i can see where andrew was coming from because where i was thinking was say i wanted to propose to my man one day <coughs> and i'm like oh i'm ready to propose i'm ready to propose and then as soon as i see him he's like well when are we gonna get married when are you compose to me jasmine when are you gonna propose to me jasmine and i'll be like i don't know like i'm petty like that so it's just kind of annoying especially like when an engagement is a special moment it's a fucking special moment and even though my engagement was we ain't gonna talk about me but anyways um i just think that he was just like you know he he seems like the type of person who probably would want it to be a, a big extravagant event with all of her family and friends to be there and she just never gives him, him a moment to bring up the engagement so i see why he said that like girl Stop being so damn thirsty. Let it flow. And you'll get your ring. But the more you bring that shit up, the more you make me not want to marry your bitch ass. When I'm already taking care of you and your fucking three kids. So I'm just like, I'm glad he finally told her that. I know he was annoyed because I was annoyed this episode. All I heard was engagement come out of her mouth. Not cute. Let it go. The thirst is so real, Katie girl. Ugh. But anyways, um, I hate that this was like the most boring episode and I came back to review but hey it is what it is thank you guys for watching um like comment and or subscribe i would if i was you guys just subscribe to me because you ain't gotta go searching for a bitch you could just boom hit the see the little dot and i'm you could just click on there you know so subscribe like watch 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 and watch thank you guys appreciate everything thanks for the watch thanks for the couple subscribers that i did get and we will see y'all in the next video. Hopefully we're going to do Housewives and Love and Hip Hop today. That's my plan to do within the next two hours. Because y'all know I like to talk. Bye y'all. See y'all next week.